So the last couple of years, we've done this sort of year upcoming in a nutshell style video talking about the upcoming Call of Duty title, which sure is still a ways out, but it's been something we've done recently in the last couple of years. Normally, we'd have this up like New Year's Day or maybe on the 2nd or 3rd of January, but last week I was entirely away from my setup for personal matters, but I figured let's keep the tradition going even if it's a bit later than normal. So today, I want to take an early look at the year of 2024 and everything that we know so far of COD 2024 and that upcoming COD title, right now rumored to be Black Ops golf war developed by Treyarch. Drop your thoughts as we go along, drop a like if you enjoy, and or are looking forward to Treyarch's next project, and subscribe to stay up to date with all things Black Ops Golf War, Modern Warfare 3, and other FPS content like X Defiant in the near future horizon here. I'd love to have in the community. Final reminder, use code ESPRESSO for up to 30% off your entire order of G Fuel, but more on that a little later. For now, let's jump into what we know about COD 2024 and this rumored title of Black Ops Golf War. So chronologically speaking, the funny thing about COD 2024 is that we've had leaks about this game all the way back since not this past July, but the July before that. July 2nd, 2022 is when we saw an early alpha build of Warzone Mobile get out there in the wild. And from that, because it was the sort of initial architecture and framework for this COD 2.0, this unified system for progression across all different titles, all different platforms, including mobile, we actually got details about the game, which at the time, the more pressing stuff was talking about Modern Warfare 2, as official gameplay wasn't even revealed for that yet. But we also saw things before Modern Warfare 2 was even revealed about COD 2024 with things like the references to the Battle of Mogadishu and thus a number of Gulf War mentions in various files and game asset strings. There was concept art for maps called Stealth, which depicted a military base with stealth bombers, as well as a map called Pillage, which was a concept image of soldiers rushing into Saddam Hussein's palace. So that was like way off in the distance, but since then we've gotten a more accurate picture. One of the biggest things as of recently came from a report from Windows Central corroborated by others like Tom Henderson of Insider Gaming, Charlie Intel, and other prominent gaming journalists out there in the space that Black Ops Golf War was that rumored title here, set in the 90s with a focus on the CIA being the next Black Ops and examining the United States' role in the conflict of the Gulf War. Reportedly, Black Ops 6 will attempt to explore a nuanced narrative of the Gulf War with a critical focus on different participants within the conflict, and it will dovetail into the end of the Cold War era and explore some of the consequences there within. So setting aside, we'll talk about the campaign in a second, but more so press stuff, I'm sure, for a lot of people is the multiplayer aspect of things. When you think about what we know so far, the gameplay mechanics, this is going to still be a part of that COD 2.0, as it was deemed last year with Modern Warfare 2 and the buildup for that. So the COD HQ will likely remain, likely the UI to some degree will be the same unless there's an overhaul for that, but it will be on that shared IW engine that we see both Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 being built upon. Bear in mind, though, that that's the same architecture, and while there will probably be new similarities in how the game feels in place to the last two titles, Engine does not always equal a direct one-to-one -one in those elements and gameplay feel. It's very possible that in a four years of developmental span now at this point since Black Ops Cold War and when they started working on this game, that they've already crafted that textbook split that we've seen in years prior, how Modern Warfare and Black Ops games felt fundamentally different. It's very possible we still see those distinct fundamental architecture design philosophies present, even if it's built on that same engine. It's apparently going to to also feature in some fundamental mechanics, dolphin diving, but in a more streamlined and more useful variation here of it. Apparently, the weapon platform system will be returning as well, so your things that we see now with Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, how there's some connected things between those weaponry. Modern Warfare 3, I will say, though, was at least a little bit better in where you didn't have to rely so much on ranking up other different weapons. It just kind of had that sort of similar family style to it. In some regard, it seems like that is going to be returning with COD 2024. Create a class was something that was recently brought into the headlines as it was reported that pick 10 would be returning for Call of Duty 2025, but I also would not be surprised if that then is included with this upcoming year's title in 2024, this Black Ops Golf War as we're seeing it rumored. We'll get more into it in a second, but it'd be insanely odd to me to transition back to pick 10 mid Black Ops cycle given that the notion we'll see two Black Ops games upcoming as we saw with this year and last year's two Modern Warfare games in a row. But anyways, again, touching on that a little bit later, we'll apparently see the perks of anti-up, where you start each life with plus 200 points towards your score streaks. Double time will increase that duration of the tactical sprint, doubling it, thus confirming tax sprint also 
is at least as the time of these leaks a little while ago that it was something that was going to be in the game and it would also increase the crouch movement speed by 30 percent operative a perk here at this was dubbed the perk that enemies can be seen through walls for a short period of time after respawn and a hud edge indicator will flash when an enemy is outside your view similar to maybe high alert and you do not leave death skulls when killing enemies this almost seems like it's something that would be a perk for campaign similar to what we saw with black ops cold war because the enemy is being seen through walls for a short period of time after you respawn. Well, that's that's kind of powerful. But again, you don't respawn in campaign like that. So we'll see if that is something that is nerfed in time, but pretty powerful at the moment. Scavenger will resupply ammo from dead players and dexterity will mantle faster while allowing you to ADS while sliding and diving and taking less fall damage. Now, again, on the multiplayer side of things, maps of radar, island, pillage, canals, CMD, grind, a Black Ops 2 DLC map returning, and firing range, a Black Ops 1 launch map returning, as well as veiled are maps that have been found in the game files, leading to this with assets. Again, those prefixes to Black Ops Golf War or whatever COD 2024 will be called. The developmental year is that prefix, followed then by the subsidiary of what mode for multiplayer, zombies, campaign, whatever, and then the asset name there so they're tied to this in some capacity and the final thing we could talk about in terms of multiplayer content is some of the weapons that apparently have leaked we have things like the colt 723 ak-74 mendoza rm2 as val armalite ar-18 the british l-85 rifle the fal the kac sr-25 the dragonov the aek 971 the sig sg-550 the armalite ar-10 the pu-21 the ip-2 the ksp-58 the colt 9 millimeter the Grendel R31, the PP90 Folding SMG, the PGM, the Dragonov SVD, the L96, the Mossberg 500, the USAS-12, the H&K P30, USP9, the Makarov Combat Knife, Halligan, and the Panzerfaust have all been found in the game files as well. So that's your multiplayer stuff, but in regards of like campaign, we know of a few things of campaign mission names that have been found in the game files. It doesn't give any sort of spoilers or anything like that, at least not to my knowledge. You have the missions that apparently are named Contract, Union, Safe House, Storm, Extraction, Redacted, and Imposter, with a few characters mentioned of Felix, Marshall, and Newman. Beyond that, outside of like the general basis of what we talked about earlier in the video, there's not a whole ton known on campaign, and I'm actually okay with that because I think campaign and storyline-wise, I'd like to be a little spoiler-free on that. I like going into that and experiencing it for myself, but anyways, beyond that, Zombies, we know that Round Base is apparently going to be returning here with rumored to be two maps returning for launch, codename ZM Quartz and ZM Garnet. There's apparently going to be some kind of consumable, like Gobble Gums, have been found in the game files. Not exactly Gobble Gums per se, but something that is consumable that you can take into the game and then activate at some point to help you out in whatever it may be. The Gobble Gums are just kind of that reference point that people pointed towards and how it would operate. There's apparently going to be armor and crafting systems, those returning within Black Ops Golf War first seen in Cold War. Honestly, I don't mind that system at all. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was a nifty helping hand in how things worked whenever you ended up approaching the fundamentals of zombies. So I'm okay with that. And apparently there's going to be the potential for not weak, but weeks early access for round-based zombies. This coming back to that Windows Central report that a gradual rollout of the game may be explored with Black Ops 6 here and the success of the recent year's campaign early access periods in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. Now that kind of stuff, of course, guarantees sales because it's a digital thing. You cut down on cost of actual production of discs and all the retail overhead associated with making a physical game. So it guarantees you that, but also digital pre-purchases are pre-purchased is. You have to pay, in most cases, for the full thing up front. It's not like a pre-order where you can put $5 down or something like that and reserve your copy, pay for the rest when you actually show up and get it. So that's something from a business side they probably absolutely adore because it guarantees your money with it. And so therefore, with that having been something that's taken over the last two years, they apparently have been looking at still that campaign, week early access, the full multiplayer offering and whatever those that didn't pre-order the game getting it at the actual launch day, but perhaps something like two, maybe even three weeks early advanced experiences for zombies, potential weeks of early access. So that may be something we see with the launch of 2024 here later this fall, but beyond zombies and everything like that, Warzone, we have a 
few details, but not a whole ton. Obviously, we know that Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep are coming back leading up to COD 2024, but apparently Verdansk is going to be returning as the big map Battle Royale map within the Season 1 integration come, not necessarily like at the launch of the game in November, but probably in that early to mid-December time frame when a Season 1 launches and everything then transfers over. So Verdansk is apparently going to be making its return here, whether that's good or bad, probably subjective depending on who you ask. But beyond that, a small map codenamed Marina is likely going to be around the size of Rebirth and Fortune's Keep that's rumored to be coming in sometime of 2025 in that year of support for Call of Duty 2024. So a couple of months after the launch of Verdansk or relaunch of Verdansk and everything we see there with that. And beyond that, in terms of just general discussions here with it, well, the platforms supported for Black Ops, Gulf War, and COD 2024 is yet to be currently known. Obviously, we're going to see our Xbox Series X and S, our PlayStation 5s, our PCs, those current generations of titles. But right now, it is still a very big question mark on if PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the subsidiary last generation consoles, if those will be supported in any way, shape, or form. Personally, while it is something that, yes, the first couple of years of these current generation consoles were tough to come by in getting one for yourself, I think that it's time that we move past those last generation consoles. You are hindering development tremendously by trying to make a game that not only is adequate performance and pushing the boundaries for current generation tech, but you then have to try and stuff all that in the bottle of a system that could be 10 plus years old by the time this game launches. So to me, I think that it's probably time to let go. At least that's the way that I see it. You're holding your development back if you try and accommodate for PlayStation 4 and Xbox. And I know that not everybody has those consoles just yet, to which I'm sure I'm absolutely the bad guy and how this comes across. But I mean, it is one of those things where you're gonna have to let go at some point for development in with a new sort of two years of development potentially upcoming for a Black Ops pair of games it might be the best time to do it. Right now, it's also rumored, as always, to have that late fall release, likely November at some point. That's always the month that I will pinpoint as a sort of rough estimation because Black Ops 4, Modern Warfare 2019, and Modern Warfare 2 are the only games to deviate from a November launch window outside of the original Call of Duty and Call of Duty Finest Hour going back to 2003 and 2004. So it's a safe bet to say November, at least right now. And beyond that, for COD 2024, the only thing we can talk about is, is there going to be some high expectations because, I mean, after all, this is a game that has four years of development to work with here. Some, of course, those first couple of years probably being like planning phases and everything while Black Ops Cold War was still in its year of support. But you have four years of development going into this game, more than we've seen any Call of Duty title have in the past, even more than the three years that Modern Warfare 2 had, which fundamentally speaking, yes, while it was a sort of disappointment to myself and a probably large handful of other people, the content offering and what was there at the launch, 50 plus weapons, Spec Ops experience, a pretty solid campaign, DMZ as a whole, there was a lot that actually went into that. Again, whether or not I agree with the fundamental philosophies of how they designed the game, that's entirely irrelevant to that discussion. So four years for development sets the bar pretty high. So while I'm excited because of that, I also don't want to get my hopes up too much because of the Modern Warfare 2 thing here. So just know that there is going to be a lot for a lot of people that are riding on this game, but we'll see what happens here in the future. But that is COD 2024 in a nutshell and what we know of. But one thing that we also mentioned again is that right now it seems like Treyarch's next title seems to be having a two-year support window. And reportedly right now, it seems like it's being done properly. And what I mean by that is that Infinity Ward was previously rumored to have handled both years of Modern Warfare 2's two years of support. Modern Warfare 2 and what we saw last year, and then this current year of what we have of Modern Warfare 3. But as we know, Sledgehammer's at the helm here for this one. So somewhere along the lines, Infinity Ward was like, nah, we don't really want to do this anymore. And while personally, I like what Sledgehammer has delivered in correcting that course of design philosophies, right now it looks like Treyarch is going to be handling both years of support and have had that planned since the end of Cold War. That's not to say some things don't change in year two as maybe another group effort with the return of Sledgehammer, maybe handling multiplayer in some fashion, maybe the campaign in some fashion or some segment of the game with other teams also contributing. But right now, 2025 is looking like another Black Ops project in some capacity, whether expansion DLC or more likely a dedicated game to boost sales by another billion dollars in the fall of 2025. And that is where the future gets interesting because right now it's rumored to be a sequel to Black Ops 2. 
the original Black Ops 2. So like a direct sequel to that, jumping time periods a little further, but also giving us remasters of Black Ops 2's multiplayer maps mixed with new maps. Again, a return of some of the fundamental gameplay decisions like maybe prestigious, maybe also that pick 10 system. So there's a lot that is going into the large picture stuff here at this. But again, focusing more so on the immediate future, that's what we know about Black Ops, Gulf War as it's rumored, and COD 2024. So that is where we're going to wrap it up. But before we do, going into the new year here, make sure you use code ESPRESSO for upwards of 30% off your entire order of G Fuel. To me, G Fuel is my cup of coffee in the morning. Gets my productivity flowing. That day started. Whether you want to grab a restock or pick something up for your very first time, flavors like Hype Sauce, Pog Juice, the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Pink Drip, all that kind of stuff. Again, whether grabbing a restock or trying it out for the first time, or maybe even just getting something like a starter kit, code ESPRESSO can get you a nice year-round discount of anywhere from from 20 to 30% off your entire order. Personally, again, I'd recommend any of those flavors that I just mentioned, but check the link below if you guys are at all interested and use code ESPRESSO at checkout to save you guys a bit of money. But for now, that is where to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the upcoming year here with Call of Duty 2024 proposed to be Black Ops Golf War? Like it, dislike it, looking forward to it, not so much. What are the case? Drop your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay updated with all things COD 2024 as we gear up for the year ahead with information coming out for that the existing content of modern warfare 3 and warzone other fps content like x defiant and more i'd love to have in the community but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you later take care and peace